If you recently A. Damaged your FEP film B. Have used it so much it has become far too cloudy to print well or C. Just like to play the drums then this video is for you. Hey everybody, Nick here and thanks for watching. To get started we will need two hex wrenches, something pokey, a razor, a replacement FEP film, and a rounded object like this bottle cap. As with all resin projects, it's a good idea to have some towels and isopropyl alcohol ready for cleaning. We will be in contact with the resin, so be sure to wear protective equipment like nitrile gloves, some glasses, and work in a well-ventilated area. Also recommended is a sound frequency analyzer, such as one on your phone, and a tool to perform with. Also, something which is nice to have but isn't absolutely necessary is a cutter like this for slicing the FEP. On the bottom you will notice eight screws. These hold the metal ring in place with the reservoir and also tension the FEP, so it loosens up as we remove it. There are a lot of screws on the bottom, so I wouldn't judge you if you used any means necessary. This is a good time to wipe everything clean as there might be a bit of resin inside. Now that we have that done, let's get the FEP film ready. Here's something from Amazon with some incredibly positive reviews so far. It's called 3D Club and they have 50, 100, and 200 micron sheets. I believe the stock Anycubic Photon uses a 127 micron sheet. So this is a first for us. One thing I'm worried about is the thinner sheet tearing. Especially on my build plate which isn't very flat. But here it goes. Using a razor or the cutter, you can make FEP rectangles slightly larger than the resin tank. Now let's get back to the bottle cap. Set this down and sandwich the FEP between the metal rings while placing everything on top. Being careful that the flat sides go inwards and the countersunk holds face outwards. Hold everything in place and begin the work of replacing all the screws again, but this time you'll need to poke a hole through the FEP. Getting the four corners first definitely helps, then follow up with the diagonal pattern, making sure everything is secure. With the FEP equally displaced, the bottle cap here prevented the FEP film from becoming too tight too soon when inserted back onto the tank. This is necessary because the bottom metal ring must reach an adequate depth away from the bottom of the tank so that it can lay flat. If the film was already too tight, then it might rip before it could be secured properly. Not only that, but we also need some slack to adjust the tension later. To attach the FEP frame to the tank, insert it back into the groove with the six larger countersunk holes facing you. Then, take the hex wrench and gently begin fastening these at an equal rate in a diagonal pattern, such as this. Right now I'm using an app called Spectrum, but there are lots available. This one is pretty nice with good reviews, but it seems that this one and all of the other similar free apps so far Frequently pause what you're doing to tell you about the pro version, which can get annoying. I think you could get away with not using this technique, but if you are ever to get into other things such as multiple resin tanks for multicolor printing, it might be a good idea to have some consistency between them. For now, we're going to stick with the range between 250 and 350. Tap around them to make sure you're getting an equally tensioned film and confirm a frequency in the center between the desired range of 250 and 350 kilohertz. And there you have it, a freshly squeezed FEP. If you want to see more videos, be sure to like and subscribe. Enjoy the music.